what is going on everyone welcome back to the channel manny b investing mbi and today i've been thinking about sunday swap man i was looking at my my staked ada that i have in men's swap and i was thinking hey man there's a few more uh epochs left before it's over and i gotta start thinking about where i'm going to stake my ada next um, I'm actually in a Maladex pool, which I'm not very happy about as far as the rewards goes. Uh, and the min swap, min swap. I really like the amount of coins that I got for the the small amount of ADA that I staked with them. Uh, so I'm very, very uh, happy and excited about getting able to, you know, DeFi with that, right? But I was thinking Sunday swap is going to be my next destination as far as a pool goes. But when, what's going on? When's it going to launch? They've delayed it and... They actually launched launched a plan and the plan had to change because of the SEC and then they decided to do it and then they decided to wait and yeah. Well, so where are we with that? Um, I believe right now the rumor is mid-December they're going to launch their pool and it's only going to be available for like four or five epochs, which is a really, really short time um, for uh, an initial coin pool, but you know, hopefully they give us good rates. I don't really, I haven't really researched all of that because it doesn't really matter. I'm staking anyway. So I've been thinking about Sunday swap. So I went to their page and I noticed that they did send out a tweet, sent an update. I was hoping that it would be, you know, some information on the pool, but it ended up being um, a medium article about uh, concurrency. So concurrency, what is that? I'm going to try not to like, you know, blow anybody's minds or, or make things too confusing but um concurrency is a like a computer science thing it's a it's the ability for things to be computed uh at the same time or the lack thereof uh it's a problem um there's only there's only so many resources and there's only so many um resources that can be used by a larger number of people so when that happens you know things can go wrong. Uh, you'll get slow transactions or no transactions. The blockchain might crash, you know, uh, Solana, think of uh, Solana when uh, we talk about that. Solana had to take their whole blockchain down. Don't ask me how you take a decentralized blockchain down because uh, you're not supposed to be able to do so, but they did. Uh, that's besides the point. <laughs> Good luck to them over there. Um, basically what it comes down to is if you have a block for with transactions and you have um, a bunch of people trying to do transactions. For example, uh, NFT, a really big NFT project drops and you want to buy it. All of a sudden your URI wallet's not working. It's lagging. Uh, it's timing out. It won't let you approve your transactions. That uh, could be concurrency. That could be the problem. Too many people trying to transact at the same time causes congestion and causes a failure in the algorithm. So what can you do? Well, it looks like Sunday swap has some answers for us and they actually put together this, this nice little article here uh, where they talk about it, you know, what it is, you know, scalability issues. Um, and here's the overview. The Sunday swap team has invested an incredible amount of effort evaluating different solutions um, as they mentioned, it would take far too long to describe each uh, deliberation in detail, but we want to at least provide high level feature matrix that come out of our evaluation. So they didn't do just one. They have a number of different uh, routes that they could possibly take. Here is the list of them. The Uniswap clone. Uniswap is a decentralized exchange. Uh, very popular. I think it's top 20. Um, very popular uh, DEX. Uh, so a, a direct port from Uniswap's logic to Cardano, as described in our white paper, mostly just for a comparison. They're not going to go with that. Um, they have open batching, allows anyone to aggregate requests for swaps against the pool. Uh, tokenized escrows issue state channel tokens to prevent market cen censorship. Um, and we hear about state uh, when we talk about Nervous a lot. Uh, mixed escrows, a hybrid of state channel tokens for guaranteed order flow and open orders for scalability, uh, programmable order book, full order book model with programmable criteria, 
Uh, ultimately, we decided on a solution that we're calling governed scoopers. That's cute. Uh, which is discussed in the last section of this article. We evaluated each of the foregoing solution options against at least the following criteria. Scalability. How many users and transactions can the protocol support in a sustained way? Can Contention. How often does an end user have to resubmit their transaction? Minor extractable value, MEV. How vulnerable is the protocol to market manipulation? Decentralization. How robust is the protocol against being halted by a single party? Yeah, that's what we just talked about with Solana. This is this is the like if you're decentralized, you can't turn the blockchain off. You can't just hit a switch and the blockchain's off. That's what Solana was able to do, but they're still saying that they're a decentralized blockchain. It's totally not true. If you can turn it off, it's not decentralized. Denial of service. How robust is the protocol against denial of service attacks? Volume independence. How much volume does the protocol need to be useful? Uh, development effort. How much effort is in it to implement? How much surface area needs to be audited? And here's how each design stacked up in our opinion. So they have like a little matrix here with some smiley faces. Smile, frowny, and dead. Oh, we got happy too. Happy, smiley, frowny, and dead. So they took Uniswap. Is it scalable? Nope. Contention? Nope. Envy? Smart. It's happy. Decentralized? Super happy. That's good. You want Uniswap to have a happy for decentralization. Denial of service? Not looking good there. It looks like you can probably knock Uniswap uh, offline if you had a robust enough uh, botnet. Volume independence. So yeah, volume is a big thing for these DEXs. You need volume for them to work. Um, they need money. Uh, development effort. High development effort, for sure. Programmable order book. Um, this is the, one of the methods that they looked at. Here are the bad marks. MEV, volume independence, development effort. Probably not good. This is a no-brainer. This has to be smiley face. If it's not, then it's then I'm not even considering it, honestly. Um, denial of service is another one. It needs to not be this. Like, no. Those are automatically out if, we're, if I'm looking at this. Um, but yeah, this is the governed scooper. This is what they've come up with and their opinion on how it works. Scalability, smiley, contention, uh, big, happy, MEV, big, happy, decentralization, smiley. It should, I, I'd rather it be this than this. I really would, they need to move that up somehow. Denial of service. Okay. Looks good. Volume dependence. Okay. Looks good. These are, I can live with this, this, um, this can't live with, I mean, that's Ethereum's problem. Ethereum's got a skull there. Their scalability is just bad. You don't, you want it to be scalable. Uh, rejected solution. This section of the article will describe how each of the above solutions was intended to work, as well as a description for what we consider to be the fatal flaw that made each unsuitable for the protocol we want to build. Some of these solutions resemble solutions proposed by other projects, and our intention is to not to disparage their work. I know people are going to be mad when they see this. They're going to be like, what? No way. I love Solana. You can't say those things. Well, it's true. They turned it off. You're not supposed to be able to turn a decentralized blockchain off. That goes completely against the whole point of the thing. Um, each solution has their own trade-offs. And just because something isn't the right solution for Sunday Swap doesn't mean that it doesn't fill an effective niche for a protocol with a different prioritization criteria or objectives. Um, so that's their little, uh, <laughs> their little small print. Hey, don't, don't kill them for trying to build something that works. Open batching, the first solution we evaluated, which even appeared in an early draft of our first white paper. So they actually started off with this model, uh, was open batching. In this solution, a user locks their funds in a script with a description of their order. Swap X tokens for at least Y tokens. This script allows those funds to be spent as part of a swap against the liquidity pool or canceled. Then some third party batches or aggregates, uh, aggregates these transactions into a single transaction. That one transaction spins each of the locked orders along with the UTXO holding uh, the pool liquidity and disperses the resulting trades back to the original user. That seems like a lot of work to get uh, a pass or fail. Um, 
I wonder if this takes up a lot of room on the network. Uh, contention among these batch batching bots is acceptable because it's not felt by the end user and the whole protocol makes progress each time any transaction is accepted that includes orders. We start using the term scooper to refer to the role of the transaction aggregator, leaning into the ice cream theme for our protocol. That's why I said, oh, that's cute. Uh, if you're following along with the community, this solution is the most similar to the one proposed by MinSwap, dub uh, Laminar. I think that's how you say that. In MinSwap, we like MinSwap. I'm uh, in their pool. That's cool. Open batching has many important properties that we try to preserve. In particular, there is no contention for the end user, only for the scoopers. And it is easy to make this compos composable with other protocols. Okay. One flaw in this is that it's susceptible to, oh man, to denial of service attack. A malicious scooper executes a trade including zero or one order, delaying execution of other orders in the interim. In an ecosystem of competing, of competing actors, this might be okay. However, once you submit one transaction like this, you have the transaction ID before it uh, propagates across the network and having an advanced in building and submitting the next transaction. Uh, a sophisticated attacker can spam the network with a long chain of these transactions and be accepted into a mempool for future blocks fairly easily. This attack, which we've been calling a trickle attack, is very cheap to execute and brings deeply traded marks, markets to a complete halt. So, yeah, you could literally go on like a Ryan, like if they ran this model, of course, and just shut down trading by just spamming a bunch of single transactions. Yeah, that's no good. Um, For a couple of ways, the attacks mitigate. Wait, hold on. I think I just scammed down. Da, 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 da. All right. Another flaw in our view is it's very high vol uh, vulnerability to minor extractable values. As the ecosystem grows and people build custom scooper applications, they could censure and reorder the market in ways that profited the party choosing which transactions to include. Yeah, so like, again, like Ethereum, you can have people coming together and launching attacks. For example, consider the notion of a sandwich attack. Process a large number of buy orders to push the price up, then a single sell order from their own wallet. So they can pump, they can use, they can use orders to congest, congest the network, pump the price, and then also have a sell order <laughs> and also be executed in reverse for more minor extractable value here is our favorite article on the subject okay so yeah ethereum yeah of course the ethereum article uh there are a couple ways that this attack can be mitigated you can enforce some uh deterministic ordering you can make your batched you can make your batch trades order independent or you can have many competing aggregators in each case however executing a sandwich attack is is still fairly trivial to pull off even in the case of many competing aggregators uh, for example, you can execute a sandwich attack since the honest actor will likely include a mix of buy and sell orders that do not move the price back down as quickly as you pushed it up. Okay. Uh, attacker executes the batch and only a large buy. So this is like, a, you know, kind of just gives you a visual of what they're talking about. Um, since the Sunday Swap Protocol seeks to be a backbone on the DeFi of DeFi on Cardano, these risks were enough to overpower the other desirable properties of this solution. Yeah, so that was no good. Escrow tokens. The next solution we evaluated and had high confidence in for quite a while was the simple uh, extension of the first. By issuing a number of tokens into scripts that used spend spent into to queue their order, the pool could know how many tokens it need, needed to witness. This prevented market censure. Combined with the way to make the swap calculation order independent, this eliminated all MEV. Users would spin their funds into an empty escrow token, uh, which would get included in the next batch. There would be some contention among users who accidentally chose the wrong escrow. But with enough escrows, this would be rare and would provide a similar experience to occasionally having to retry your online credit card transaction. Okay. Uh, this solution bears the most resemblance to the solution proposed by MELD, where they reference reserve tokens. So this is MELD's, basically MELD's. Um, this is actually a really good article because it's basically telling you 
about all of the dexes that are trying to build on Cardano, trying to fight for number one. And ice cream and uh, Sunday swaps just like, yo, here's here is the secret sauce for all of them. <laughs> so this is a little diagram about how this one works with the reserve tokens, um, the ex escrow transaction, um, and then eventually the batch swap where everybody gets what they wanted to get. And if you didn't, you picked the wrong thing. Then they said it would basically would on you, the user end would look like um, maybe your credit card failed. You need to rerun it. So that um, is cool. Uh, for those curious, escrow token was included in the Sunday Swap protocol, which was in the demo we uh, began showing to VCs behind closed doors in late July, which we featured in our own public demo event on CC. I was going to say they did that on Dan's uh, video. Yeah. Dan's channel. Unfortunately, the solution crashes head first into the sizing limit of the Cardano blockchain. Um, the uh, prob bas the yeah, blah, 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 nature of the argument above depends on hundreds of escrow tokens. And in practice, our first implementation of this was hitting the Cardano protocol limit with five or six escrow tokens before even adding in features like governance. So yeah, that's not going to work because the block size just just doesn't support it. And then they talk about some negatives here. Um, mixed escrows. Before we move away from the escrow token entirely, however, we considered one last extension. Um, mixing both token holding escrows and token list escrows by allowing a mixture of tokenized and untokenized orders. We could provide a baseline guaranteed order flow if a user was willing to retry until the order got in. No, that's a bad user experience. <laughs> Unfortunately, this suffers from some of the same denial of service vulnerabilities as the all escrow token solution. Under the resource limits of Cardano transaction and our quickly approaching development timeline, we did not feel we could deliver a compelling, fair, and safe set of incentives around the protocol in the time of launch. So we abandoned this approach. This was one of the approaches we may revisit in the future when Cardano transaction limits change or when we have enough time to devote thoroughly exploring the right incentive structures to prevent denial of service. Programmable order book. Another idea we explored, explored was the notion of a full and configurable order book. In this model, users lock their funds in a script which encodes the criteria for the order. Trade at a specific price, dollar cost average, Etc. A key tenet of the approach is the lack of a market maker uh, or AMM, uh, automated market makers. Market participants order completely independent of one another. This appears to be the most similar solution to the Maladex. Uh, we're in a Maladex pool. Uh, at first glance, this approach offers a number of properties that we are uh, that were appealing to us. No contention to submit orders. Programmability, uh, composability. The Maladex paper does an excellent job of describing these advantages, so we won't bother to rehash it here. However, as we explored the model, a number of issues came to light. <laughs> Almost all of them stem from a lack of a market maker to ensure orderly execution. Broadly speaking, these issues are inefficient, inefficient use of liquidity, problem, difficulty in handling large orders, uh, not much of a problem for me, but a problem for uh, big, you know, institutions, things like that. Blockchain congestion, that's a problem. Order erosion, problem. Market debt requirements, fee market, no thank you. Inefficient use of liquidity. Consider the following example where Alice, Bob, and Carol are providing various amounts of liquidity to the market. Jack and Jill would both like to execute swaps against that market. In this example, the market has sufficient liquidity to fill both Jack and Jill's order. However, Unlike a market maker, which could ensure both orders are filled with a pure order book, whether or not the orders are fulfilled depends on which offer Jill and Jack and Jill attempt to match against. Oh, okay. So let's take a look. Jack and Jill submitted a transaction at the same time. Jill got processed first, resulting in Jack's transaction being canceled. So uh, Jack, boom, and Jill, boom, submit transactions at the same time. As Jack order, order type gets larger, the problem increases as Jack's single order will need to race against many smaller orders. So that's not fair. So it's like the best fit wins, everybody else gets screwed over. Despite sufficient liquidity in the system, the lack of a market maker causes this round of orders to be suboptimal. So if you're manually, independently submitting these orders, then yeah, you run into this. But if there's an AMM, 
Then it says, hey, there's enough liquidity. We can get this done for both of them. Boom, done, game over. In this model, it just, it basically, the one that works, works, and the other one is just scrapped. You got to resubmit. Uh, because Jack's order is larger, he must match against multiple orders to obtain efficient liquidity to fill this order. Jill, with her smaller order, can fill against the single order. In the above example, both parties decide to include Bob's order in their match transaction. And unfortunately, only one of the orders, in this case, Jill's will be filled because there's only one Bob. Uh, but can't Jack just resubmit his transaction against Alice and Carol? Yes, but this leads to our next issue. Difficulty with larger orders. Jack would, of course, resubmit his transaction using a different set of UTXOs. However, he would face the same problem the next round. So the same problem, he would basically just be over and over resubmitting orders, resubmitting orders until he finally found like a clear lane to for it to work. So he could be, he could just like, just get tons of fails, 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 fails. And if you're failing, who's paying for that? What kind of, you know, network usage are you dealing with there? Um, what if you're on a time crunch and you need to get a transaction done right away because you're worried about price and whatnot? So that won't work. All right. So uh, like a good time. However, it illustrates a pro uh, general problem with pure order books as the size of oh, the order increases, the likelihood of it being able to match orders decreases exponentially. Suppose Jack had a very large swap that required 12 other orders to fill. Each of those 12 orders may have other people attempting to match against those orders. In order for Jack's swap to be filled, he must win all 12 races. To win any one race, Jack would have to, would have an even chance. To win all 12 would be difficult. So you basically aren't going to be able to fulfill large orders with any kind of uh, network uh, activity going on. Jack has two solutions for this. Divide his order into many small part orders or attempt to reduce the number of orders required by finding matching orders. That would be annoying. If he attempts to divide his order, he runs into the next issue, blockchain congestion. Fees, that's what we were talking about. If you're just hitting the network with failed transactions, that's got to cost someone money someplace. So instead of a single order that requires 12 transactions to fill, Jack could instead create 12 orders that each match against a single order. Doing so today, Jack would run into the following issues. Fees. Instead of paying for a single transaction, Jack is now paying for 12 transactions. And unlike Robinhood trades, which are free, swaps on a blockchain do incur a cost. Network congestion. While this is a configurable, today the maximum size of a single transaction is 16K and the maximum size of a block is 64K. Attempting to fill 12 times the number of orders on a blockchain where each order would need to include a full copy of the validator script or a copy of the blockchain uh, would significantly contribute to a worsening experience for the entire community. So think uh, NFT launches on <laughs> Cardano when that, when you got a big launch on Cardano, freaking forget about using your wallet. Like I can even check my balance. Um, so if you're, so if splitting the order is problematic, perhaps Jack could go the other way and match against fewer, or larger orders. This leads to the next issue, order erosion, order erosion, because splitting an order has many disadvantages today, fewer in Hydra. Jack may attempt to match his uh, larger order against other larger orders. The problem here is that many other larger orders will attempt to do the same thing. It's in Jack's interest to find an order that's larger or a small size if he can't find it or the same size if he can find it than the order he's submitting. That sucks. So then you're just like running around looking for a partner like you're at a freaking you're at a school dance or something. <laughs> uh, multiply this behavior for the entire community. Yeah, you're just going to take the network down. Well, you're not going to take it down. You're just going to bring it to a freaking crawl. Uh, market debt requirements. Fee market. I'm interested in this fee market one. I don't want to go into detail on all of these because I'm pretty sure you guys don't really care. Um, the fee market. The last issue pertains to how orders are executed. There are two basic models for execution. Either a submitter of an order executes the order or they allow other parties to execute the order. If the submitter executes the order, then they are required to manage an off-chain order executor that runs until the order is filled and that seems annoying this is a rather high bar that i doubt most market participants would want to go through exactly yeah so this is just yeah this is this isn't going to work and then they have their solution their solution right here this is what we want to look at finally we come to the solution that we have chosen to go with for our launch we believe it preserves many of the positive properties of the order book discussion above without compromising 
on some of the criteria we believe will be critical to an early leading DEX on the on the Cardano blockchain. So what they're saying here is they they haven't solved the issue, but they've made it to a point where you'll get a good experience and you'll be able to do what you want to do right now. Um, and then they'll continue developing in the future. Internally, we have been calling the solution the Scooper Model AMM Order Book. It stems from the same insight that underpins proof of stake protocols by aligning incentives and creating a systems of self-governance. You can scale a system by building trust into the portal, the protocol. So like proof of work, um, like, uh, like pure order books, market participation can place good until cancel orders into the blockchain. Those don't require interacting with any pre-existing entities and do and don't suffer from the UTXO contention problems and other protocol designs. Using a programmable API, these orders can be tailored to the market participants' desires. However, unlike a pure order book, the liquidity pool can rely on an orderly and efficient execution of swaps enabled by the automated market maker. Similar to protocols described above, we rely on a third-party aggregator. It's worth spending a moment recalling some properties of these third-party aggregators as this article is fairly long. Uh, internally, and as a company that loves a theme, we've been calling these actors scoopers. A scooper builds and submits a transaction which executes many swaps against an automated market maker and in return collects a small ADA fee as described in greater above detail above. This role has an outsized amount of power even when adhering to the rules of the automated market maker script. However, if you can somehow establish a limited amount of trust in the aggregators, many of the challenges in each of the above protocols disappear. If you can trust your aggregator to consistently and fairly choose which orders to include, you no longer need escrow tokens, for example. You can focus on the contention lists on ramp on the protocol composability. So how do we ensure that our scoopers are honest? First step is choosing trusted members of the community to run them. Cardano is blessed in the stake pools, a diverse set of participants with a reputation and pedigree for this. Thus, just as we select stake pools to partner with for our ISO, we, with the help of the community, will also be selecting stake pools to run these scoopers. That's cool. Um, I wonder if they get any kind of bonuses for that. Later today, we will be sending out a sign-up form for stake pool opera. That is cool to be part of the ISO and to run Sunday swap scoopers. After filtering this list based on some simple criteria like social media presence and experience, we will turn things over to you, our community. We will be hosting a week. Oh, get the vote at the launch Sunday swap decks will assign 30 day scooper license to the stake pool operators above, which can be used to construct aggregate swaps from the Sunday community. Each time they do this, ADA transaction fees are locked in a script. Dang, that's dope. After some period of time, those scoopers must renew those licenses claiming the transaction fees on the way. So they kind of double duty as a stake pool operator. If however, governance decides via a vote, that one of these scoopers is a bad actor, that license can be revoked and ADA transaction fees will be routed to the protocol's treasury instead. That's cool. Uh, for example, governance is going to be a big thing on Cardano. Uh, for example, someone can run a uh, reference implementation of the order selection algorithm, publish the results in an IPS fee for everyone to see. It's possible for strange network conditions to create small deviations in the among the scoopers, but if the scoopers consistently and dramatically deviates from this, a vote can be called to revoke their license and deny them both the ADA transaction fees and access to the market that would have motivated the bad action in the first place. In this way, assuming that the collected ADA rewards as mater are material, the scooper is highly incentivized, incented to remain honest and to claim those rewards. If the collected ADA rewards are small, then the market is thinly traded and the amount of value they can extract out of the market is also too small to rationally justify the efforts needed to act badly. So greedy people are greedy. Uh, bad actors are typically greedy. They're not going to be bad actors if there's no benefit. Over time, we see the DAO as upgrading the system with more dynamic election structures. Everybody's into these DAOs, man. Uh, PBX is going to be a DAO too. Uh, where the Sunday token serves uh, a similar role to ADA in selecting and thereafter rewarding or punishing the set of aggregators. This will need to be done with care, but that growth is aligned well with the growth of our protocol as a whole. That's cool. And they get into benchmarks. So I'm not going to bore you with this stuff. It's long. Uh, they've got a conclusion here. The, yeah, this definitely gives me a lot of insight. Actually, this article, I would recommend you looking through it and trying to understand it. 
because it basically just tells you the story and the secret sauce of all of the DEXs that are popping up uh, on Cardano. They're going to start a selection. They're going to create a whole sub market um, using the SPO model, um, governance model, using their token. I didn't know that. So that is actually cool. And I am more bullish. Hopefully you're not sleeping. You didn't click away from this. This is very long and technical. Um, I feel like I did a pretty good job here. If you feel the same way, give the video a like, uh, hit that subscribe, share the video with your friends on Twitter, and I'll see you on the next one.